This ugly looking tablet is in fact a audio beamformer prototype. It's got two microphones along the top, one on either side, two on the bottom for a total of six microphones. And it looks a bit rough because the case was printed with a stereolithography resin printer and gray resin and I painted it black, not very well. Now the tablet was originally commissioned by the head of an audio department for some pet project that he abandoned for no stated reason. So I salvaged this thing into a beamformer, which I'm going to now explain and demonstrate. An audio beamformer is electronically similar to a parabolic dish, but with the added advantage of being able to arbitrarily and instantly steer the focus to any spot in 3Space. In addition, all that data gathered for the production of one beam can be recycled into many new simultaneous beams aimed at different targets. Here's how a beamformer works. To focus at a target, we delay the audio arriving at closer microphones relative to audio arriving at the most remote microphone, and then we sum all the signals. If we have six microphones and someone is speaking at the focal point, the voice will be amplified by an integer factor of six, and the signal to noise will similarly improve. This is because random noise at each microphone is not correlated with noise at any other microphone. Noise does not add, yet the signal does, so we get an incredible improvement in signal to noise. I should point out that the higher the frequency, the shorter the sound wavelength, so the effect of beamformer sound addition falls away more quickly for high frequency sound sources as we aim away from the focal point. A woman's voice focuses more sharply than a man's, assuming her average frequency is higher than his. I had a limited amount of time to get this beamformer uh, demonstrable, so I hard-coded the focal point to be right here, and I ran a babbling brook broad-spectrum audio sample at the focal point and uh, away from the focal point. And that's the audio demonstration that you're about to hear. I should point out that the QNX OS team that were supporting this tablet were all terminated a few days after I initially got this working. And for me to change even one line of code, compile and link, would have been a six-month struggle because the support for the tools was so poor. So this thing froze where it is. And here's the audio sample. And now a river sound. This is directly at the beam point. Now I'm going to move it out of the beam point. This is out. And now back. Out again. Back for a final time. The architecture is easy to understand. Delay, then sum, then filter. The application-specific circuit approach works so efficiently, continuously, and with such low power that the best DSP programmers could not configure any DSP to do as good a job. That's just the wrong approach. I used an Altera Cyclone 5 field programmable gate array for this. Pulse density modulation microphones are ubiquitous in smartphones because they're cheap, small, simple, and they can be placed anywhere in a design since their single bitstream can be easily routed across a circuit board without any worry of sound corruption due to noise. PDM microphones work by representing the amplitude of a signal with a continuous stream of bits whose density of ones to zeros represents amplitude. If you run these fast, they work well. Peak positive amplitude is all zeros, peak negative amplitude is all ones, and no signal is just an alternating stream of ones and zeros. From a field programmable gate array design point of view, adding the signals is just a large OR function, and you can't get simpler than that. Here's the overall architecture of the six microphone beamformer. We have six digital microphones producing PDM bit streams at a rate of 3.072 megahertz, which is an industry standard. Each PDM stream enters a 2K bit FIFO buffer with a selectable tap off point to create a variable delay up to 2048 bits long. Summation of the six PDM streams at 3.07 MHz each 
produces a single stream, which is a product of the two, at 18.432 MHz. From that, I want an audio signal at an industry standard rate such as 48 kHz, which is slightly more than double the Nyquist sampling rate for the best human hearing. This mono stream is fed through a cascade integrator comb filter of order 5, delay 1, and decimation factor 384. 384 is the divisor I need to produce 48 kHz pulse code modulation from 18.432 MHz pulse density modulation. The CIC filter is low pass and provides the anti-aliasing that I need prior to decimation. Overall, this prototype beamformer consumes only 4,417 logic gates and 12,916 D flip-flops. So in ASIC silicon, it might be a square millimeter and cost 10 cents. As I've said before, the data and memory could be recycled to create new beams. No added memory needed. Multiple beams is where this gets powerful. The FIFOs attached to each microphone in a beamformer capture the sound in an entire volume, which can then be examined in real time or at a later time if the data is frozen. By adding multiple tap points, we can create multiple beams. In this example, we have n microphones and 16 beams since we have 16 tap points off each FIFO. The basic idea behind finding and tracking a target is easy to imagine using binary success approximation. Divide a volume in two, explore, choose the half with more sound. Divide that half in two and repeat the process iteratively. Once you find the sound source's coordinates, you can use other beams to create a 3D fence around it. If the sound source moves into a fence beam, it becomes the main beam, and you can deploy a new fence around that. This approach could work well in close proximity where there's one dominant sound source, such as a driver talking hands-free, or someone hard of hearing listening to you with their beam former at a crowded party. To quickly get the FIFO delay for each microphone relative to a chosen point in 3Space, the fast, compact approach is to use a series of small lookup tables. Pick a point in the plane of the microphones to be the origin, and all the microphones then have known coordinates relative to that. And the arbitrary focal point out there is coordinates x, y, z. So let's say microphone 1 is at x1, y1, 0, and the closer microphone 2 is at x2, y2, 0. The added sound delay needed behind microphone 2 is proportional to d1 minus d2, where d is the distance from a microphone to the target. To simplify hardware at the expense of a bit of memory, one could replace d2 with a constant. And you can play this game in polar coordinates as well. In summary, so much has already been integrated into smartphones and automotive that it's tough to find anything new to add. In late 2017, smartphone innovation peaked with an Apple ad campaign promoting animated emojis, including the invaluable soft serve turd. Executives know best, but I think beamforming has been sadly overlooked.